I am president of uh, York College. My last name is spelled K-E-I-Z-S, and the first name is Marcia, M-A-R-C-I-A, not Marcia, as I'm sometimes called. I chose to leave Jamaica in 1964, and I was just 20, in fact, uh, and I chose to leave Jamaica for the purpose of uh, getting higher education. And um, I, I had applied to the University of the West Indies, which was a small so, uh, emerging university at the time. I did not get acceptance. It was not very unusual not to get acceptance because it served the whole Caribbean and you had to be sort of the top scholars to get in. And I wasn't a top scholar. However, I knew I would have an opportunity to go abroad because my sister had gone to Howard. And so I applied to universities in Canada which because we were a commonwealth at that time and still are, uh, we in Jamaica had preference, if you will, and we were also able to pay fees that were the same as Canadians, which was in fact very affordable for my family. Did you plan to return to Jamaica after you completed your study? Of course. I mean, every Jamaican who leaves Jamaica goes out of the country to England, to the United States, or to Canada to improve themselves, to get the higher education that may not have been available to them there, and to return home to make their contribution. And it was absolutely my intention and my family's intention that I would return to Jamaica. I had no intention of staying in Canada. I had no intention of coming to the United States. Uh, I would come back to Jamaica, and I would probably teach high school English in one of the high schools that I had attended, either Arden High School, which was my first high school, or St. Andrews High School. And I would just be exactly like some of those high school teachers who had taught me English. Certainly, even during my three years, and in fact, the program at the University of Manitoba was a three-year program, so I got my baccalaureate degree in three years. And each step of the way, there was no sort of hard and fast notion. Uh, I was definitely going to probably pursue the master's because, you know, might as well wrap up the whole package <laughs> as quickly as you can um, and then return home. Uh, now, the, it, it really evolved, quite frankly. Uh, and when I had completed my baccalaureate degree, and then I moved to Toronto from Manitoba for a short while, l still looking for a master's program, then I applied for a couple of different master's programs, and I was accepted in, at Columbia Teachers College. Now, in the meantime, I need to let you know that while I started school and attended school in Canada, every summer, religiously, I was in New York. We got out of school fairly early in Canada, maybe early May. You know, it's very cold, long winters, uh, spring comes early and you're out. Because I came to New York because I had a sister here and my mother, who had left Jamaica to attend my sister's college graduation, decided to stay here. And so I would come every summer, I would fly down, get a job, work, <laughs> get my spending money, and return to Canada. And while I was doing that every summer, I sort of began, to, New York began to grow on me. I must tell you, the first summer I spent here, I hated New York. It was too big. It was too crowded. There were too many people. It was too noisy. <laughs> there were too many cars. And I was afraid of the people, <laughs> I've got to admit. I was kind of afraid of the people. It was just too populated for me. But over time, uh, coming in, working, I worked in a daycare center. I worked at Greyhound Information. That's how I got my American accent, by the way, by working at Greyhound Information and listening to all of the accents and being able to understand the accents. That's also how I learned some of my geography of the United States <laughs> through having to study those schedules and give people information about in those days how to link up from one you know bus station to another anyway. Um, so I'd been spending some time in New York and it started to grow on me 
And then when I was able to get into Teachers College, obviously, it seemed like a no-brainer, except for the money. <laughs> but I figured we're going to be able to do this some way. And so I came to New York permanently, I think, in around uh, either late 69 or early 70 and started, um, started to attend Teachers College uh, with the support, having my sister here who had finished her master's by that time, having my mother here, and having my father basically saying, well, you know, you should be coming back home to Jamaica, um, and how are you going to pay these school fees? And basically I said at that time, I said, well, you know, you've been very supportive to me over the three years I've been high in, in, in college. I think at this time I should be able to do it on my own, but if you want to help, here's how you can. And he did help me, uh, but I was able to really do Teachers College pretty much on my own. If you, well, when I say on my own, uh, carrying the heavier part of the burden uh, myself in terms of uh, in terms of the finances.